Oh, hey friends, it's Len here at 1A Auto. Today we're working on our 1996 Dodge Ram 1500, and I'm gonna be showing you how to do a right front outer tie rod end. It's gonna be super easy, I can do it, you can do it too. As always, if you need this part or any other, you can check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. Okay friends, so we're underneath the vehicle, and we can see we have our right front outer tie rod end, comes along here. You have a sleeve right here, that's the adjustment sleeve. And then the right front inner tie rod, which goes to the pitman arm, which is connected to your steering box. So, what you need to pay attention to is the condition of your threads on each one of these tie rod ends. Generally speaking, if your vehicle is as old as this one, and uh, it hasn't been serviced in a long time, slash had any of these parts replaced, they're probably pretty darn rotted at this point. Um, if you look at them, you can see, I'm gonna grab a screwdriver here. Just a nice little small pocket screwdriver. Just go like this. Just with this pocket screwdriver, I'm literally peeling away the threads on this tie rod, which comes here. And then this one right here really doesn't look like it's too much better. This one's semi-decent. So the problem is, is inside of this, is this where it is? Feel. Okay, so this is turned. So this somebody put facing up like that. So moisture and all that crud's going right inside there. And it's probably rotted out the threads on the tie rod ends where it goes into the sleeve. Generally speaking, it's always a great idea to just go ahead and re replace the whole thing as one assembly. So you would get the right front outer tie rod, which is this nice long tie rod. You would get yourself a new sleeve, which you need to do no matter what, whether you're replacing the outer or the inner, and you would replace this as well, all at one time. Okay, if for some reason you don't want to, maybe yours are in good condition. Um, we'll say you're just replacing the outer tie rod, right? the inner tie rod end still in good condition, which this one isn't. Um, <clears throat> you would basically just unscrew this whole thing. You would unscrew the sleeve from this inner tie rod end right here, take it right out, and then what you would do is you would just count, all right? Just to make sure you know how many threads you wanna go in on that tie rod end. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna replace this whole assembly right here, but once it's apart with the new parts, I'll show you how all this would come apart. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our measuring tape, and we're just gonna kinda get like a nice guesstimate of the length from the outside of this tie rod end all the way across to this one. And it looks like we're looking at about 42 and three quarters. So we're gonna write that down, and when we put together our new tie rods, we want it to be 42 and three quarters inches. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we have a cotter pin here and a nut. You would take those off, give this a couple bonks with a hammer, and it'll come falling down. This one right here, cotter pin and a nut. We'll come down here, you have where your shock mounts onto the arm. You're gonna come right on the back side, there's a cotter pin back there with a nut. And then right up here, theoretically, there'll be a cotter pin somewhere on this, uh, possibly, and also, of course, the nut. So, let's get started. So it doesn't want to come off. There you go. This one. Get that out of there. Right, this one right here should have a cotter pin as well. Carpet on this thing's pretty much wasted, so I'm not gonna worry about that one, but theoretically it should have a cotter pin. And this one should also have a cotter pin. They don't. Let's move along. Okay, so we're gonna take off this nut right here. It's 18 millimeter. Let's see if we can get it on there.
or not. It's a castle nut. We'll set this aside. We'll continue. All right. So right now, this does not come out of our arm right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this side nut off, that washer off of there, the shock, and then the other washer that's under there. And then we'll just put like a nice big socket over it. Looks like it's about the size of a 22. And then we should be able to break it free from the arm. So grab our 18. <clears throat> Our nut, little locking nut. There should be a washer right here. I don't want to come off. It's really holding on there. Okay, our washer. <clears throat> Pull that off of there. That other washer. Okay, so now we're gonna grab a socket and probably just a long ratchet. And I'm just gonna see if I can try to twist this to get it to break free. Okay, let's get this on here. <clears throat> oh yeah, once you break it free, you should be doing all right. At that point, you're just gonna take off the nut from the back there. There we go. Put that on there for now. This part right here was right inside there. Okay, let's move along. All right, so we're gonna use our 21 millimeter socket. I'm right up on here. It's pretty much ready to come off. Let's get our socket off of there real quick. It's our castle nut. I'm just gonna put it on a few threads here. We'll come back to that in a minute. We're gonna continue on, do this one and that one over there. This one I think I might grab a swivel, see if I can get a better shot at it. Cool. All right. We're cooking now. So what needs to happen now? We've got all the mounting bolts loose or the nuts that hold the studs in, right? So now we need to start separating things. To do that, if you're replacing this inner tie rod right here, you can go ahead and bonk right up on this as long as you're not worried about damaging it. If you're not replacing this and you're only doing the sleeve and the outer tie rod end, you do not want to bonk this, all right? You're gonna have to try to come up along here, give this a few bonks, but then of course you risk damaging your power steering box. Um, so it's really up to you. It's better just to do it as a complete unit anyway. Of course, there is something like this as well, a pickle fork. You could use this, available at 1aauto.com. Come right in like this, give it some bonks. You see how it's angled like that? It's gonna create a wedge and it's gonna separate the two. All right, you could do the same thing all the way down here. The problem with using something like this is it's inevitable, it's gonna damage the boot and it'll, ultimately it'll damage the ball and socket as well. So if you're not replacing the unit, you don't want to use a pickle fork. You're just gonna have to keep bonking right about here. Bonk, 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 until this finally just kind of seems like it's broken free. So you do you, boo-boo. Let's try it with the pickle fork. Right in here. Oh yeah, it separated nice. Just make sure it drops back in there. We don't want it coming out yet because we still got a little bit more work to do. 
This one's in really good condition, so I'm obviously not gonna use the pickle fork on this one. Save that one for last. Come right over here, make sure your nut's on this. Continue with my pickle fork here, because it's working well. There we are. There's the reason for having the nut up there. It lets this drop down without actually falling down and potentially hurting anybody. We'll continue on to that last one. All right, so this one right here is in great condition, so we're gonna try to save it. I'm just gonna use my nut. Put it on here. I'm gonna make it so the threads are flush with the top of the castle. Okay, as close as possible. It's only so I don't damage the threads on it itself, and of course I don't damage the nut to the point that I can't reuse it. I'm just gonna give this a loving bonk and see if we can get it to break free. Oh yeah, very nice. I'm gonna take this out and the arm's gonna come swinging down. So you wanna make sure you have everything clear. Bring it down and get it out of the way. Put my nut right back on there so I don't lose it or misplace it. Awesome, so we're cooking right along here. This is pretty much ready to come out. You can use whichever side you want. Take that side out of there. Grab that one out of here. And there we are. Okay, friends, so here we are. We've got it down on the bench for you so we can have a better look. Um, you've got your inner tie rod end right here. You've got your sleeve, and you've got your nice long outer tie rod end. If you're doing one at a time, let's say that maybe you're just doing your outer tie rod end right here. That would be pretty much the outer tie rod end and the sleeve. If you were doing the inner tie rod end, you would do the inner tie rod end and the sleeve. There's never just an inner tie rod end and no sleeve, or outer tie rod end and no sleeve. Unless, of course, they're pretty much brand new and they look like this, okay? Generally speaking, it's always the best idea to just go ahead and replace the whole assembly. 1A Auto has it all very cost effective, and um, it's really not gonna cost you very much to do it right, so I would do it that way. But, to continue, if you were just gonna do the inner tie rod end, what you would do is you would take this off of the pitman arm, you would take the bolt out of here that holds your stabilizing shock, and you would have it so everything's just hanging pretty much from right here and right here. And you would just turn this until it all comes free, and vice versa for this side. If you were just doing this side, you would unattach right here. That's where the left front um, inner goes to. And then of course you would take this off right here, okay? Leave all this still attached to the pitman arm and to the steering thing. And then you just take this and take it right off. So, I'll just show you what we're talking about. Let's say this is in the vehicle right now. You would just turn this. What it's doing is it's actually unscrewing both these sides at the same exact time, okay? When you go to install, it's very important that you time your tie rods properly which essentially just means that you're gonna be putting this on both tie rods at the same exact time, okay? If it's, if it's maybe a thread off or something like that, it's really not that big of a deal. Of course these things, yeah, those just come right off. Get this on here real quick. I could probably just take it off, but. Okay, let's continue getting this thing out of here. And very close. There we are. Okay, so it all came separated at the exact same time, and that's because of this right here. This is your tie rod adjusting sleeve. It's very important. The inside of this tie rod adjustment sleeve, I'm sure it doesn't look anything like this one, where you can see all those threads and they're beautiful and perfect. A lot of times what you'll notice, if you did happen to get this off, there'd hardly be any threads in there. It would be rusted and rotted to the point that you don't even know if you really want to put your tie rods in there. The reason for that is because once you put these on, the threads inside here need to grab onto the threads on here very tightly. If it's smooth surface on either the tie rod or inside the sleeve, even though you tighten this down as good as you can, that could pop right out. You hit a good speed bump or you know a pothole or whatever you might have in your area. Maybe you're going off-roading. Um, whatever the case may be, you could pull your tie rod end right out of the sleeve. So to avoid that, you just replace it. If it doesn't look like it's gonna be a savable type of item like these right here, where you can't even see the threads on them, 
just replace it, okay? So let's jump ahead now and uh, we'll do a product comparison. So here we are, friends, a quick product comparison for you over here. Right here, we have our original right front outer tie rod end out of our 1996 Dodge Ram 1500. Over here, we have our brand new quality 1A Auto Part. These parts created the exact same. We've got the same overall length. If you could see, it would come down inside this right here and it would come out to about the same area. If you came down along here, you notice that if I could put a dowel, I can go straight through this hole and into that one with having this end lined up. Comes with a brand new castle nut. Comes with, even comes with a little bit of old grease if you put it on top of your old one like that. Let's clean it off. There we go, that looks a little bit better. Brand new castle nut, brand new boot, keep the moisture out of there. Has everything you need. That said, I don't see any reason why this wouldn't be a quality part to install into the vehicle. As always, if you need any parts, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. All right, something that's good to do is you can either use a little bit of copper never sees inside the sleeve or right on the bar itself. All right, just give it a little spritz. Just like that. It's gonna help keep uh, moisture out of there and keep it flowing. It's also gonna help the alignment person down the road when it comes time to do your alignment. So now we're gonna start this on. It's important to do this. You just go on a teeny bit on one side. Give it two turns, just like that, so it's on. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side, except this one I'm gonna spin the tie rod. There we go. Oops, close. Come on. There it is, okay. So you make sure that you didn't go too far on either side. They're both about the same. And now what you do is you actually just turn the sleeve. Let's see if I can get it to do it. We're just gonna turn the sleeve until it comes all the way up. And we'll get it as close to measurement of the original one as we can. All right. Um, of course, if you had this in the vehicle, maybe you still have your tie rod still attached to the vehicle or the other tie rod, you would just be doing this in the vehicle. Since we're doing it all as one assembly, I can do it right on the bench and it's much easier. So now we're just gonna measure this real quick. We're looking for 42 and three quarters from one end to the other. So it looks like we're just over 43. So we'll just take it in a little bit more here. Try it one more time. Down the end here, bring it down. Looks like we're getting really close now. Get it one more time. And this is just a guesstimate, really, like a rough estimate, because the alignment person is really gonna be the person that's gonna get this right in where it's supposed to go. Us, personally, we're just trying to get it so it can go down the road to the alignment shop. Oops, go a little bit more. Yeah, so it can get down the road to the alignment shop without burning the tires off of it on its way. Sometimes people do stuff like this, and they don't measure it, they just kinda eyeball. And by the time they get down to the alignment shop, tires making noises all the way down the road. They're all chopped up. And uh, you know, the alignment guy's gonna say, what did you do? Well, sorry. But anyway, we've got this set to 42 and three quarters inches length. So let's go ahead and get it into the vehicle. All right, so it's time to get this up in here. We're gonna go right up into the pitman arm right here. Put our nut on there. That way there we know we're safe. The bar can't go anywhere. Bring this one over here. That's how it's lined up. Just want to slide right in. There we go. Okay, so that started, that started. We can get our piece in here for our shock. Do that right after we get this in.
to get this lined up, you can just try to turn the wheels a little bit. That one started in. Okay, I'm gonna grab our piece. It's probably a good idea for us to clean this down. I'm just gonna clean it real quick. And we'll come right back. Okay, so we've got our piece. It's gonna go right in here, just like that. Take our nut. Go right on the back side. Cool. I'm gonna hold this and I'll tighten this up. Let's get this tight. It's nice and tight. So we're gonna take our washer, right on like that. I'm gonna use a little bit of grease right along this shaft right here. A lot of times that'll help get the rubber on there. Just try to get this lined up. There it is. This up on there. Put another one here. Side up. Okay, that's pretty snug. Give it a teeny bit more. And that's it. Awesome. Let's tighten this up. We'll tighten this and that. We'll continue here. Okay, so we're just gonna start at one end, work our way down, and all we're gonna do right now is just bottom these out and then we'll torque them down to manufacturer specifications. So we're gonna go ahead and torque this down to 65 foot-pounds. There we go, just check it one more time. Cool. Take a peek. Looks as though we might be able to get our cotter pin right through there. That's where the uh, slot on the slotted nut is and where the hole is through the stud of the tie rod. We'll grab a cotter pin. All right, so we grabbed ourselves a cotter pin. Just gonna go straight through here like this. You just take your cutters, grab onto it, just try to peen it over. Perfect. We're gonna do the same for the others. Torque them all down, 65 foot-pounds. That one looks like it's lined up pretty well. This one. Looks like it's good too, awesome. Um, a lot of times they won't line up perfectly and if for some reason your slot isn't lined up with the hole inside your tie rod, you have to continue tightening even past where you torqued it to. You cannot loosen it to the next little slot. You have to continue on to the next one by tightening. Pretty snug. Beam this up. Right there. That's definitely tight. Tight. We know that's tight. This is tight. Perfect. We'll tighten these up real quick. So let's snug these up. When you go to turn this, of course the back side of the bolt's gonna turn. So we'll grab our pliers. You can use pliers or a wrench or whatever you wanna use really. Now when you go to tighten this down, you don't wanna over tighten it. The torque spec for this is only 40 foot pounds. 
which isn't really very much. Okay, I'll grab my torque. Looking for 40 foot pounds here. Do this one. There we are. Just gonna hit one more time. Make sure it's preset. Definitely tight. This one. Okay. Tight, 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 tight. Tight, tight. Ooh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com, your place for DIY auto repairs, for great parts, great service, and more content.